wanted to say this, that the highest salutation should go to the teachers who are here today and who also teach us about life. Without them, I won't be here today. I have learnt under four or five gurus, eminent gurus of classical dance. The second thing I want to say is that I am deeply honoured to be here because finally, I think classical dance has been given the status of being a part of society and all of you are coming to know about what is classical dance and how a dancer survives because this is one of the worst profession financially even now in India. But there are other satisfactions, even we don't make any millions of dollars. When I visited with my husband, Turkey, Azerbaijan, uh, Syria, Jordan, this kind of countries. In Turkey, after our performance, our duet performance, the ambassador and the premier of Turkey had attended the show. And he said, coming to me, that your art form transcends politics, economics, finance, and even social barriers. And that's so true because we are talking about communication. And communications is a must to reach out to people, to touch their heart. And dance or music or painting, don't differentiate between who you are, what you are, whether you are rich or poor, whether from any religion, caste, creed, you are the same person. A little after independence, when changes were happening all over India, I became aware of myself only in 1961 living in a house surrounded by mustard fields and barren lands. No electricity, no TV, no tap water, only tube oil. And the place was known as Krishnanagar, which now many of you know as the very sophisticated colony of Sabdarjang enclave. So we were very small, we were six children and my father who was the only earning member, used to cycle every day 14 kilometer one way to State Trading Corporation where he had got a job after he left his job as a journalist in Agra. And he used to cycle every day and while coming back buy the groceries and everything for home for the six children, I am the youngest and then we used to eat at night after my mother will cook the food. We walked to the school five kilometers every day, no lunch, no money in the pocket. But there was a culture at home. My mother kept us busy, kept us busy with painting, drawing, singing. When I look back, I don't feel that I struggled, but it was very, very hard life. After I remember that from school only, which was not a public school my father could not afford, but luckily all the sisters and brothers were very good in studies. So, I set a target that I will go to Lady Sri Ram College. Though I was from a Bengali speaking school, I didn't know how to speak a word of English. Though I was an authority in class 10 only on Bengali literature, but I was so embarrassed to talk in English that I didn't know, I didn't know, I just thought I have to go to LSR. So that's the best college. So I passed the test and we went to LSR and there I was three years of graduation and uh, three years, two years of post-graduation. We were, I was alone, no friend. I couldn't open my mouth to utter a word, total introvert. That's my family, incidentally, my brothers, sisters, and in Agra with, I am on the lap of my mother. So after that, and you can imagine how LSR is, a very sophisticated place very good looking girls. I was the ugliest with two oily plaits and a sari and everybody making fun of me. Even the Bengali community made fun of me. Like they used to say like something very, you know, it's sort of, uh, I don't want to remember. But incidentally, after so many years in 2009, I was awarded the Golden Jubilee Award of LSR as the most prominent alumna. And also, when I started my Kalamkari designing, uh, invited to present one of my creation to the Myanmar uh, president, Aung San Suu Kyi, the Nobel laureate, who is also incidentally from Lady Shiram College. 
So I got over my shyness by starting reading English thrillers. So once I started, I couldn't stop. Then I went up to Arthur Miller, Solzhenitsyn, Shakespeare, everything, finished. And then even now I read a lot. So dance, what happened? I was doing my MPhil. And from childhood, I wanted to learn dance. But there was no chance of learning, because there was absolutely my father could not afford to send me somewhere to learn classical dance. So then I told my father, OK, give me two years of time. If I can't become a dancer, then I will sit for IS. Because I had topped in MA. I was a good student. I mean, padaku, jisko bolte hain. So, um, so my father said, OK. So I just simply got down from the bus one day, doing MPhil, went to Triveni and enrolled myself in Kuchipudi. I didn't know what is Kuchipudi that time. Just seemed to be a very rare dance style. So my first guru told, one, gave one look at me and said, you can't be a dancer. You are 21 years old. In the south, people start from the age of six. And you are hopeless. You are not even good looking. You are not even, you don't have a personality. So I just said, OK, Guruji, I will practice. So I started my practice. So he could not get rid of me. After two years, he told me, OK, you give a performance. That performance became a hit. And then he suggested that since you are so serious, you go and learn from Guru Jai Ramarao, because he is the most authentic Kuchipudi guru in Delhi. So I went and met my future husband, very shy, couldn't speak a word of Hindi. I felt smarter than him. You know, coming from LSR, I was thinking, now I'm more smarter than this gentleman, at least. <laughs> So I told him, Guruji, why don't you perform? Because you are young. You are only 29, 30. So he said, who will dance with me because I am alone? And uh, he didn't know a word of Hindi. So I said, OK, I, we will do duets. So therein started the duets. And he was so conservative that when we got the first trip to London, he said, I'm not going without marrying. So I gave it a big thought, because it was a very big day, because I wanted to marry a very rich man. You know, after all the struggle of childhood, I wanted somebody with a car, driver, every luxury. And, uh, you know, somebody who will say you are good looking and all that. And we gave 35 years we performed together. After 35 years of performances and 30, 40 awards, we thought we have done, we are now settled. And in the meantime, my son, Vedabrat, was born when I was 40. So everything I have done is late. What I'm trying to tell all of you is that there is no time limit for doing anything you like. Because life is very, very short. OK, this was one of our good photographs, which was in many magazines. And we are now in many. You can say we are part of history of Indian classical dance. And he said that people are appreciating your saris and blouses. Why don't you make some to sell? So I said, sell? I want to buy things now. I want to have money to buy, go to the mall, buy everything, you know, have a big car. But now you're telling me to sell. How to sell, I don't know. I don't know, have any idea about fabric. I don't have any idea how to work with people. But there came my designs, which I designed myself. I changed the concept of Kalamkari, which is hand painting by vegetable dye. And I applied the same theory of dance to this. To have excellence, to have a finishing, to have a beginning, to have a middle, to have an end. So the products, I never took them to anywhere. I never told any dancer friend to buy them. Because they will think now she is so poor that she wants to sell her saris to us. So I kept away from dancers, though I knew everybody. But I, now everybody is wearing my dresses. Uh, but I went to from door to door. And I went to the, I remember I went to the Canadian embassy to sell my blouses to a lady who had called me that she wants my blouses. So I was thinking, standing in the security door, what am I doing here? I'm a Sangeet Nadak Academy awardee. I mean, I may get Padma Shri any day and I'm sitting here with a bag of blouses. Then I thought, okay, this is another beginning. This is another work which I should do with full, I mean, I'm a learner. I don't know anything. I sold four blouses that day. Then after that, it went smoothly. Crafts Council came to me. They launched me in Kolkata. Jaipur online, they displayed my things. And it smoothly settled down. So I am very much open to, I am like a kid, actually, in my mind, though I am 63 now. So at the age of 60, I was really thinking of a nice retirement. And I opened this business. Now I have, I have a very personal relationship with all my customers. It's not a big business. 
for me, for artists, the priorities are very different. We know we are poorly paid, but we are happy with it because the devotion is there. The devotion is not religious. People think dancers, the classical dancers are always praying to some god and saying, oh, Krishna, come and rescue me. Oh, Indra, come and... No. This devotion is to my dedication, to the stage that I cover, to the people that I communicate. When in Cuba, somebody comes in tears and tells me that I wish I could dance with you. That's the prize I get, award I get. When in Russia, people call us living legends. That's the award we get. It cannot be always compared to money. Money, but I, I want money. I mean, I want to be comfortable. And I could see my career graph like this. Then a second-hand Fiat, then a second-hand Maruti, then a new Matisse, then a new Swift, then an A-star. So I was developing. You know, and I, once I went to buy a Mahindra SUV, and then I consoled myself saying, no, no, I don't have a parking place, so it's okay. Because I didn't have the money to buy that. But it's okay, I am happy. I am happy in doing what I want. I, I want all of you to think that you have a heart and a brain. Think with both the things, not with one thing. Then you will suffer in life. So after that, I have to innovate. So at the age of 62, my son told me, Mom, who are, he's an MBA from Micah, and he's very critical of us. So he said, what you and father are doing is okay, but it does not reach out to younger generation. Nobody is interested. It's so episodic. Like you wear the same costume, you have the same live orchestra, they sing the same songs, you dance the same. I don't see anybody coming. I can't call my friends. I mean, they won't be interested. So I thought, okay, I will make a new dance company. So I made Rasa United. And we do, why not, why not use classical dance and make it very, very highly professional so that people get connected. All of you know Ramayana, Mahabharata stories. So why not tell a story in such a way that it's powerful? And you know, I innovated, invented myself again in a different way. I am not going into the personal struggles that I went through, but it was a long struggle when after doing the duets for 35 years, I decided I will go into a multi-style uh, production. And I will make it so professional that internationally when we do some scenes from Mahabharata, these are all the posters of my performance, that I will present the dialogue sometimes in English if it is necessary. Like if I am performing in Egypt, I will not talk about only religion. I will talk about peace, harmony, destruction. It is how you present. It is how you tell the story. It is not that many people have good stories. But then how you tell? So I have Bharatnatyam, uh, Kuchipudi, and Chau. Chau is martial art kind of dance, which is very good for demonic characters. Bharatnatyam, very precise and geometric. And Kuchipudi has dance drama. So I wanted to reinvent myself, because I am not young anymore. I am going to be 64 next month. How can I act like a 25-year-old girl, madly in love with Krishna? I mean, I can teach. My students can learn from my experience. But should I live stage just because I am old? Or So I shifted to character roles. Character roles of Dronacharya, Krishna, manly roles. Because after 50, it doesn't matter whether you are acting like a man or a woman. I mean, you are not in your finer elements, you know? Because you are what you are, and you have to accept that. So, but I can use my knowledge. And I have observed my husband, who's a fantastic male dancer of the country. I, he has dancing with me for 35 years. I can easily copy him, you know? Because I know how he stands, how he poses. So, one example I would like to give you, because I think you will enjoy the communicative power of dance. That is, I did a production on Karnavad. I don't know how many people know who is Karna? Mahabharata. Okay, most of you know, Karna was a very warrior prince, but who sided with the Kauravas. And he's, when he comes to the final fight with Arjuna, his chariot wheel is stuck in the earth. And he can't take it out, because it's a curse. So he tells Arjuna that, Muhurtakam paripalaya, please, give me one second, one minute, I will just take out that wheel. You see, the body language changes, even if you are a woman. You can do gender change in classical dance. You can't do it in any other field. So I said, look, I will take out this wheel, and then I will fight with you. You are a kshatriya. You are the greatest warrior. Help me. Give me one moment. 
And then he tries to, you know, take it out, take it out, it doesn't come out. So Krishna, who is the cleverest, and he is the whole, knows this is the opportunity to kill him. But Arjuna hesitates because he does not want to kill an unarmed man. So then Krishna says to Arjuna, so I put the dialogues in English. Because Karna says, do justice, you are a warrior, you know this is not just to kill me like this. So then Krishna says, dharma, justice, you are speaking about justice? Where was your justice when you defeated Yudhishthira in the evil game of dice? Where was your justice, Karna, when you dragged Draupadi to the core of Sabha, holding her hair and disrobing her? And to elevate Arjun to kill Karna, he says, where was your justice when all of you mercilessly killed the boy Abhimannu in an unjust war, war? So why are you talking about justice? And then he tells Arjuna, kill him right now. This is the moment for you. Don't spare. Shirohara Suta Putrasa. Kill this Suta Putra right now. So this is what is innovation. Because from a woman you become a man. And how you justify, how you set your goal, that all I leave to you. But at the same time, don't believe in generation gap. Your parents know as much as you know. Only thing they are more experienced. My son is my friend. We talk about everything because I have never forced him to do anything that he does not like. So, enjoy life. I read from somewhere that one British actor, famous actor said that, you know, enjoy life, do crazy things, love, precious moments of life, don't let it go. Thank you.